you guys might have seen some of the beef that was happening on Twitter and then a smorgasbord of videos. This is why I can't forgive technicals, the problem with technical zero video. And of course, there's a video that John Swan made, which we'll talk about a little bit later. As you guys probably noticed by the title of the video, this isn't about any one channel in particular, like Ethan Klein. I just used him as bait to get all the bottom feeding commentary channels who actually need to hear this message. I have no problem with people who want to criticize me or my cases. That's perfectly fine. But in the midst of all of this chaos, I've noticed a very obvious double standard. There's a case that perfectly illustrates what I mean when I say there's uh, currently a double standard in the commentary community. Not to be confused with Turkey Tom on Twitter, that's just his handle, Zaptai, who is now currently known as Big B, was a popular commentary channel in 2017. He was involved in a flirtatious relationship with a 16-year-old catfish who was actually 14 when he was 20 years old. Now I can already hear the people screaming, Dude, he was 19 and she said she was 17. This is literally Call Me Carson. Well, if you do a five second Google search and calculate the ages according to the time frame of the allegations, you'd realize almost instantly that Zaptai was 20 the entire time. Also, five years ago, four months after the original Twitlonger was posted, Zaptai said, was talking to a 16 year old a fucked up thing to do? Yes, won't challenge that. Why would he say that talking to a 16 year old is fucked up if he had only spoken to her sexually when he believed she was 17 and then broke it off when he found out she was 16? Let's make this clear, he thinks she's 16 at the time. Not 13. She had allegedly catfished the at the time 19 year old Zaptai saying that she was 17 or 16 years of age. I'm gonna take his word though, and since he's not gonna challenge it, the official age gap for this accusation is four years. I just wanna make it very clear before I go further into this. I don't believe that Zaptai is a pedophile, neither do I believe Zero is a pedophile. Okay, I'm just using this case to show you guys how there's a double standard with how coverage works on some of these more serious accusations because it's not just about my zero case. It also spills over into coverage on other people. So I think it's a pretty interesting thing to talk about. Now that we've established that, let's go over the redemption arc and the arguments made in Zaptai's defense. Before we go over the specifics, we need to know exactly who we're dealing with here. One of the major proponents of Zaptai's comeback is a creator known as Augustus. Augustus often covers philosophy on his channel, and one of his working theories is that as long as the two are in high school, an 18-year-old dating a 15-year-old is fine. In the context but of a high school relationship, yes, 18 to 15 is fine. And yeah. in this specific context, a three-year age gap is totally fucking fine in a high okay. school relationship. He would later coin this the high school context theory. I, being a scholar myself, thought this was weird as fuck. A senior dating a freshman is something that, on its own face value, I don't necessarily have an issue with. I think that's all right? weird as fuck. That's creepy. Okay. But maybe there was something I was missing. So I hit the streets in desperate search of his acolytes to see if anyone could enlighten me. It's fucking bright out here. Hello? What's up, man? Hello everybody, I'm Reporter Tech, and today we're down on the streets to see what people think is acceptable when it comes to a high school setting. Specifically, if an 18-year-old dating a 15-year-old is fine. Let's go. What's up, man? What's up, brother? Do you think it's weird if an 18-year-old dates a 15-year-old? Yes. Point is, one's an adult and one's a child. Yeah, but they're both in high school. Like, one's a senior, one's like a, a freshman. Okay, so you take my friend Josh here, he was 27 years old and a senior. Would it not be weird? Well, it's like a high school setting, so like... He was in high school at 27. He so, dropped... if I'm like a substitute teacher in high school, would it be weird if I dated a 15-year-old? Absolutely. Okay, it's just a lot of people on the internet have been calling me a pedophile, so I was trying to, you know, go out in the real world and ask some I questions. Mean, that's that's kind of sketchy, dude. Fifteen. Not even in like a high school situation. No. Not at all. You're not giving up. You're not giving her the body enough. No, I'm saying trying to develop. No, I'm saying that's because the pussy could work. No, I'm saying don't mean you could. No, I'm saying you could fuck it. You feel what I'm saying? You gotta let the mind develop and know what the fuck she's doing with the pussy. You feel what I mean? So if you got somebody that's more mature than you, but like that's still rape though. You know what I mean? You gotta let her. You know what I'm saying? You gotta let the mind catch up with the pussy though. You know what I mean? The mind has to catch up with the pussy. That's it. You wanna fuck a 30-year-old uh, a girl, will you? Hey, it depends. Mine's not there, it totally depends. <laughs> I'm saying, you're not gonna, hey, she gonna be thick as hell. Hey, you're wearing a nice, and, and listen. What, the zebras? Get that. Get that? You know what, they're clean. Damn right they are. 
Do you think it's okay if an 18-year-old dates a 15-year-old? Absolutely not. That's just weird. Weird behavior. Let's say it's in like a high school context. I think if you're a senior dating a freshman, you're a weirdo, and I do not want to be anywhere near you. What if this guy was like a senior in high school, and he was dating your freshman daughter? What would you do? I mean, I wouldn't find him, but I would probably get some people too, because that's just fucking weird. And if he's a senior dating a freshman, that's off limits. You get someone to find him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay like a hitman or something. Oh, okay. Um, I don't really think you think that's really weird. I think you're just I virtue do. signaling. So. I do. Yeah, I'm virtue signaling. I'm because virtue Because I don't signaling. think how you, I don't know how you could have such a strong issue with 1815, but then be so charitable to Zero. I never said, fuck yeah, dude, this is sick. But your yeah, video no. obviously paints a narrative that Zero is worthy of forgiveness. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think people are redeemable. You yeah, obviously true, agree so. since you're friends with Zaptai. This guy right here says that it's fine if 18 year olds date 15 year olds. Do you have like any comment about that? This guy is, uh, he's 20. Uh, that's trash. That's absolutely trash. That guy gives me pedophile vibes. He gives you pedo vibes. Yeah, pedo vibes. Now, Facebook caught everybody out by surprise, kind of lately, right? They say they got 400 and something thousand Facebook users. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. Well, are you guys down to answer, like, a uh, question? Is it okay if an 18-year-old dates a 15-year-old? Not unless they have somebody's consent, like another party. Anything that just involves two people, there's usually, like, some third-party user agreement that you want to be a part of, and then turn it in, and then whoever, a higher up, right, to so check that out and shit and say if it's good, it's not, probably. So you think it should like go up through Congress? If you're like 18, you need to fill out an application to say, yeah, I can fuck this 15 year old. Pretty much. You got a channel? What's it called? It's Haitian J the Rapper. Haitian J the Rapper? Every Monday I do, uh, I post on new, uh, new content. 23, about to jump from the free throw line. 10 months old in this rap game, I'm an effort spitting. Okay, um, well, I'm a pedophile, is that okay? No, man, you, you, are you <laughs> Come on, man, you kidding me right now. Do you think it's weird if an 18 year old dates a 15 year old? Nah, I wouldn't be fine because I got an 18 year old and I got a 14 year old. What, what if it's like in a high school setting? High school setting? Yeah, high school context. I still wouldn't be okay with that. Man, to be honest. This is me right here. Oh wow, you hold on. I, I already Are did. Boxer, Wait, man? did I? Am I a boxer? Yeah. Uh yeah, somewhat. Yeah, I fought this bald nigga named Esam. I don't know if you heard of him. He's kind of famous. <laughs> did you beat his ass? Yeah, I whooped his ass. <laughs> yeah. On. One last question. Can I pet your dog? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> oh. Sleep on me if you want. Hessian J coming in hot. Get your head taken off, boy. Yeah. Those provocative images were there on both ends or just from her? Just from her. And yeah. apparently the pictures in her underwear were on her Twitter and her Instagram. They so, were public consumption. They were on social media. So we have no child porn involved. Zero. It being public images doesn't mean it's impossible that it's child pornography. In 2019 on Instagram alone, they removed 1.2 million photos and videos, including child nudity and exploitation. And even on Twitter, they've been sued for refusing to remove child pornography. This is not a good argument. And apparently the pictures in her underwear were on her Twitter and her Instagram. They so. were public consumption. They were on social media. Dude, what the fuck is this? No, put that shit down. Uh, what the fuck is this? Is this chick 14? Man, what are you talking about? She she told me she was 16. It, is this your cum? It, did you just cum on this right now? She's not even naked. I got those from her Instagram. In this one, she's covering her tits with one arm, and in this one, she's in her underwear. You're an arm's length away from going to jail and you're just fucking chilling? All right, how about I beat your fucking ass? Is that what you want? No, man, what the fuck? I'm trying to see what the fuck is going wrong here because you're... You fucking bitch. I'm not going back. In America, there's a test known as the DOS test, which is a six-factor guideline to determine whether imagery would constitute child pornography. It turns out it doesn't have to be 100% nude, so the fact that he had sexually suggestive images, depending on the guidelines, you're not 100% in the clear. All they'd have to do is prove whether a visual depiction of a minor constitutes a lascivious exhibition of the genitals or pubic area. But does that really matter? Because at best, you have sexually suggestive images of a 14 year old girl saved on your phone. Forget the DOS test, you don't even need that shit in Canada. From the official Canadian government website, child pornography is dually defined as both any visual representation or any written material or audio recording that advocates or counsels sexual activity with a person under the age of 18. You could try to argue that, but everywhere I've searched, including court cases, text messages can be and are considered child pornography in Canada. So we have no child porn involved. Zero. 
Despite this harsh reality, Nick, Augustus, and Tipster are still brave enough to stand by Zaptai. And to that I say, Nuclear ass take. Anytime I've brought up the Zaptai case, the response is always, it's legal, so who cares? But he said he was planning a trip to Washington to come see me and have sex. And once again, one Google search away, it shows that Washington had a consent age of 16. Not to mention, the age of consent in the state where Heather resided, being Washington, is 16 years old. So it would have been completely legal for them to meet up and have sex. The general rule of thumb in these situations should be that if you can't get the guy arrested for it, then don't try to destroy his life over it. The caveat of using a legal defense is you have to make sure that everything's legal or else it all falls apart. And since you guys want to bring up the laws in Washington, even if you were in a high school context, you would still be a registered sex offender. Given that the images were only sexually suggestive, let's assume that you're off the hook of any federal CP charges. You would still be in direct violation of Washington's law on communication with a minor for immoral purposes, which requires mandatory registration as a sex offender. Get this, you'll, you'll like this. Specifically, if the communication took place electronically, it's considered a class C felony that could carry up to five years in prison or a fine of no more than $10,000. If you're thinking, well technicals, there's hardly enough evidence to convict him on this, well then you're in luck, because this law covers both words and conduct, with a focus on the predatory purpose of promoting a minor's exposure to and involvement in sexual misconduct. Basically, the fact that Zaptai talked about how much he wanted to fuck this girl over text is literally all you would need. Also, you know, the fact that legally it's considered child porn in Canada doesn't help your case either. That's just a tiny thing you guys forgot to mention in your videos. No need to thank me. <laughs> We genuinely don't have any idea whether things like you're worth getting arrested for were a joke or not because we only see what Heather wanted us to see. Before you say, oh, who joke about something like that? Let me help remind you that I just vindicated a YouTuber who told the girl it's rape time in the DMs. Yeah, uh, I don't think that's the same. I, I don't think that's the same at all. Unless he said it's rape time and she said rape me. I don't think those are comparable at all. This was your it's rape time moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so fucking pissed if someone said that while defending me. So without Zaptai knowing her proper age, it's entirely possible that he had considered this at the time. And to expand upon that anymore would really be condemning Zaptai for a thought crime. Thought crime? This isn't 1984. Even if we write that off as a joke, where's the joke here? Still waiting to get filled in on that punchline here. Now stop me if I'm mistaken, uh, cause I don't have a law degree, but I think it'd be a little bit more than a thought crime if he had sex with a 14 year old. Hey officer, what's the big deal? She told me she was 16, and that's the age of consent. Yeah, that's, that's not how that works. Think about it. You're two years into college, sitting around your dorm room thinking, you know what, I could really go for some junior pussy. You know, junior mints, no mint. So around 2.30, when you know they're getting out, you just kind of survey the crowd. You're thinking to yourself, well, I'm at a high school. This is a high school setting. And context does matter. So you take your pick of the most fertile jailbait, make sure as fuck you're in Washington, and just go to town. Disregard the fact that this is in Twilight, and doing so would be incredibly illegal in 19 other states. It being legal doesn't make it morally correct. I mean, the age of consent in Angola is 12. I don't think legality is the argument you want to be making here, unless it's in defense of him not knowing that she was 16, which is not the case. Dude, dude, what the fuck are you what? doing here? What? You're not supposed Bro. to be within a hundred feet of here. Those Bro. are kids. It's dude. legal in the state of Washington, you fucking asshole. Why are you still recording me? It's legal. Yo, what the? Zaptai. Let her go. Let her go. God damn, you got away again. What about like um, if they're 20, they're like in their second year of college and uh, the other person's 16? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's wrong or absolutely like, let's go? 
Absolutely, it's wrong. What I think that a 22-year-old or 20-year-old looking for a 16-year-old that they didn't even know, yeah, I would think that would be kind of... What about like uh, 16 and 20? Yeah, I guess it starts to make you question a little bit. You worry about the young kid for sure. So um, I guess it would all depend, again, what the relationship with the kid and the family was. But you, you definitely want to be careful in those situations, I'd say. What if uh, I was like 20 and my girlfriend was 16? That, that's a little less blurred line. I think the, uh, although that is the age of consent. You're not for it? No. So if they're like 20 trying to date a 16 year old, you think right. that would be weird? I mean, it's still messed up if they're 18 anyway, mm -hmm. but technically they're allowed to do it unless they're 19 or anything else like that. Okay. What if they're like uh, 20 trying to date a 16 year old? No. 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 <laughs> no. Sir, what's your opinion on the age of consent? Too high, too low? You're not catching me on that shit. <laughs>
considered this at the time if he thought she was 16. That's still bad. It doesn't actually matter if she lied about her age. Minnie Lat's case is 2117, which is a huge yikes moment. What did this dude do? He's a pedophile. Children. Like an <laughs> actual one yes. or like, okay. But Zap Ties, which is 2016, the same exact number of years apart, is fine because the age of consent and where Ed is, 16 to 20, that's legal. Now you might be thinking, that's fucking disgusting, dude. And to be honest, look, I've defended 14 through 17. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. Let's continue. I don't know if I feel comfortable with that, but hey, it's fucking legal. All right, so whatever. I don't really give that much of a shit. He's a pedophile. Children. How fascinating is that? We're gonna play a fun game called Is It Zap Tie, where I show you a series of clips and you have to guess who they're talking about. Are you ready? All right, let's go. This guy literally sent and received images to minors, makes an apology video for it, and YouTube puts it on trending. How does a pedophile apologize? Well, I guess we'll find out here. Okay, that one was an easy one, because Zaptai didn't send any images to a minor, he only received them. This is a clip of Augie calling Minilad a pedophile. Is it understandable to panic and fucking try to save what, your career? I think he, he went over the line. He went over oh, the line. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. No, oh, really so care. it doesn't matter what he did. He could have made the best video in the entire world. My opinion on it wouldn't have changed. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, no, this one's about Mini Lad again. What was the line that he crossed? Oh yeah, sending his dick to 17-year-olds. The major difference is that Zaptai didn't send his dick to the girl four years younger than him. He only planned to fly out and have sex with her. So in that regard, it's, it's better. <laughs> The girl is 14 now and is 19. Now keeps saying, but she lied about her age, but she lied about being two years older, meaning her lied age is 16. She is still 19, but she lied about her age. It doesn't matter. Her lied age is illegal. Now, technically this is Zaptai, but this clip is Zaptai talking about red kiwis in Nick's video on red kiwis. I could see how that would get confusing. Even in my video, everyone's like, how are you going to make this video and then do the same? I'm like, well, the difference is I never admitted to all this shit on video. You thought she was 17. You find out that she's 16. Correct. And and you continue the conversation. At this point, you were 19. And I believe at some point you turned 20. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Do you, in hindsight, think this was inappropriate or... Oh, for like, sure. Where, where are you? Definitely, yes. That was just straight up fucking creepy and not all right. I just fell back into what I usually do and I only saved the pedo jokes for the people who deserve it the most and that's pedos so terribly sorry i hope we get i hope i hope i hope we get this right i hope i hope i hope this makes up for it if you guessed that this watery-eyed apology for calling someone a pedo is about zap tie then congratulations you're correct as a bonus here's tommy laughing at calling mini lad a pedophile this guy's definitely like can you call him a pedo this mini lad character i is mean okay? he admitted to like sending sending nudes to a minor i don't quite yeah recall. no really yeah I, I, i'm kind of fun calling him that yeah. yeah well he's got red hair nobody believe it wasn't him <laughs> <laughs> fucking ginger fucking ginger pedophile pedophile Peta- Wait. Hey, yo, hold on. Hey, yo, this shit kind of live. You can stay. You can stay. Yeah, you? Yeah. Matter of fact, you can have her. Hey. Jesus Christ. When in Rome. Yeah. Wanna know how I got these scars? Well. I'm the Joker, baby! Zaptai told people he was a sociopath. Sure, I said I was a diagnosed sociopath or I said antisocial personality disorder. To me, it's two sides of the same coin. I don't really think that difference matters that much. You'd think the case would end there, but not for Nick and Tommy C. No, 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 no. Long after everyone involved stopped giving a fuck, both of them went on a moral crusade on Zaptai's behalf to stop the evil content creators who had already apologized for the misunderstanding. Elvis and Pig mm. have expressed like regret for doing that publicly. They've done it privately as well. I don't hold any ill will towards either of them personally. I'm 100% against the end, mainly because it was all about his sociopathy that he doesn't have and what we just assumed he had, yeah. you know, based on what he tell what he told us. If you have any respect for any of us, just leave the guy alone, really. Elvis hasn't apologized and Pig 
hasn't apologized. Isn't it a little embarrassing that these two dumb fucks got strung along into posting this defamatory podcast by a 17 year old kid with a speech impediment? No, defamatory would be knowingly posting misinformation. Zaptai told them he was a diagnosed sociopath. It's literally entirely his fault that this was even an accusation. How are you still not getting this? I hate to say it, and I don't think every word he says is gospel, but Jordan Peterson, you don't want to be the guy crying in the corner out of control and not being able to take care of everything when your parents die. Because people are counting on you, and in this case, Zaptai was counting on you. Can you just remind me how dead parents and Jordan Peterson are related to their relationship in the slightest? What the fuck am I listening to? I cried like a bitch at my grandfather's funeral in 1997. You should have been a better friend to Zaptai! I've been sitting here for a while now, and I can't think of anything more pathetic than a guy in his 40s running a drama channel, waving his moral superiority over people who have actually successful content. If you want to criticize Elvis, there's probably plenty of things that you can find. But if you're going to sit here and pretend like you're a better person than Elvis the alien, just because you stood by a guy who cheated on his girlfriend with a 16 year old, uh, you can go fuck yourself. I do have a message for technicals. I would rather you leave the whole fucking thing out if you are making a video on Nick, and I'm pretty sure you are. Please don't talk to me about this. I think you're both egomaniacs. You know, you're not doing commentary. You're, you're playing cancel games. Have I engaged in that kind of stuff before? Yes, but always in self-defense. I never fucking targeted somebody to take them out. If you're going to be involved in canceling people, why not admit that you do it to people who deserve it instead of making up this really shitty excuse that you do it in self-defense? How do you cancel someone in self-defense? Oh, dude, I had to bring up the fact he was a pedophile or else I was gonna lose the mortgage on my house. Was it self-defense when you said no one should work with Elvis the Alien? Elvis the Alien probably shouldn't be worked with, collabed with, if you're trying to collab with somebody with moral character. Yeah, that was self-defense, right? Fucking get over yourself, dude. Nick, why were you so desperate to get a response from Elvis and Pig when the issue involving them had already been resolved? Well, you don't want to make a video or you don't want to put anything on your Twitter account to talk about it and commend me on how I did a good job cleaning up your fucking mess because you're cowards. You guys are absolute fucking pussies who nobody should fucking respect. They don't need to acknowledge your video was fucking amazing for the situation to be resolved. That's, that's not how this works. It kind of reminds me of your Nerd City video where you were so excited Excited that he responded to you that it kind of gave you like this massive ego boost and you started like you start power tripping because you had an impact on his life I'm a nobody but I'm also the nobody who made a video that got hundred and fifty two views and made you snap nerd city It's almost like you've never actually been criticized before. It's just it's so fucking cringe the most impactful thing I've done with my platform was clean up your biggest fuck up and give you a really charitable representation in the process. How fitting that the most impactful thing you've ever done is uh, fuck up a story so bad that it reflects poorly on all of your friends. I bet John Swan is punching the air right now. <laughs> Yourself to suitable, suitable, suitable without hurting you. you be normal. Right. What would you consider to be like morbidly obese? More than 35 percent. More than 35, like the body mass index. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. What would you consider to be like morbidly obese? Morbidly obese. Yeah. Like what? What is too fat to you? There's no such thing. Everybody's beautiful. And we're designed the way we are, dude. He could eat a uh, Snickers and gain one pound. I eat them and I gain ten. Yeah, it's like you know a I mean? like a thyroid it's condition. A thyroid, thyroid condition, absolutely, dude. What would you consider to be like morbidly obese? Oh, uh, they probably a, a, a mouth fetish. Anybody who uses their mouth excessively, that'd probably be the obesity. So they have like a mouth fetish. Yeah, they're probably a mouth any mouth fetish. Yeah, you'd, you'd be you'd be caught in in, in limbo. This isn't related to Zaptai, I just think it's funny. Some members of my Discord decided to make an obviously fake leak to see if uh, Augustus would take the bait, and both him and Tipster immediately fell for it. Dude, do Technicals wants be people to become mods to join my Discord. Oh, please respond. I'm gonna own him. No. That's a really bad fucking look, dude. Holy dude, shit. Dude, he's yeah, desperate. His video's gonna be shit. Like the fuck out of that tweet and spread it. Arizona oh. tipped five. Hey, oh, man, you gotta remember that it may be 
impersonating tech. Don't be desperate, man. No, I can. They confirmed that it's his actual Discord. Job well done, guys. Great job. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Fucking easy. Yeah. 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 Easy. easy clap. It's called we do a little trolling. I've always been an Augie hater since day one. All right, Augie. Listen, if you want me to throw him behind the bus, my PayPal's in the description. So <laughs> slide it over. Don't need to Augie to get his attention to make him believe a shitty meme is five dollars. What we do? We send what Aiden back in time. Shit? In the past, this plan was done by the best of the best. Never forget, and shout out to the Covenant and Low Tier God. Subscribe to Low Tier God, everybody. God bless you, Augie. But well, you're you're a little bit of a dumbass. Check out my art at Jisoo dot art. Uh, I sell <laughs> merchandise, some hoodies. That's it. Also, my one thousand dollar game. Out about your GoFundMe. Your guys's habit of comment first, research later is probably due to the fact that you know if you waited to know what you were talking about, nobody would give a shit. I guess when you're making the exact same video as all of your peers, you gotta get ahead somehow. Entertainment? Research? Fuck that nigga! I'm Dixter! I'm about to hit this algorithm right quick! Guys, we have new merchandise. That's right, the high school context shirt. The print's a little bit small, might make it a little bit bigger to roll it out to you guys, but this is going for $20. You watch technicals on YouTube? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Let's oh, wow. go. Elvis Haley fan. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. welcome. Plus shipping and handling, whatever the fuck it is. So if you want a cup, it's there for you guys. New shirt. I have another one in the works that'll be dropping in a little bit, but um, yeah. On to the, on to the next bit. Oh, fuck. Ah, ah. Ow, ow, it hurts. It actually hurts. It actually, stop. Kevin! When Augustus threatened my career in DMs, I wasn't quite sure what he was referring to. But when this video that John Swan made came out, he seemed pretty excited about it. This video is 57 minutes long, and there's a lot of points that just aren't even worth responding to. So I'm going to respond to the biggest points in no particular order, and hopefully you get an understanding for uh, why I think this video is so dog shit. <sighs> Let's set the scene. <laughs> I see you're parroting my setup. That's cute. That's cute. Let me try yours. Guys, my channel still hasn't recovered. I'm currently coasting off my savings, and I don't know how much longer I can do this. The Chris Hansen vids aren't paying like they used to, and I'm losing subs every time I upload. At this rate, I just might have to quit YouTube. I cannot live off my savings forever. At some point, they will run out. The channel is holding on by a thread at the moment. I've completely been kicked out of all of the YouTube recommendations. Whenever people see my video in their feeds, they hit the unsub button. I mean, I don't blame them. Why spend 27 minutes responding to a guy with 6k subs who's not even involved? Please subscribe. I'm suffering right now. I cannot live off my savings forever. At some point, they'll run out. My channel's holding on by a thread at the moment. I'm in desperate need of assistance. Now you're gonna have three videos on the same topic after you respond to me. And I can't imagine your audience is gonna be too excited to hear the same shit three times. In the new DSM-5, pedophilia is depathologized by differentiating between the sexual preference for prepubescent children and the disorder in case of additional factors. Clinically, this is an important distinction because a high percentage of pedophiles do not act on their sexual urges and 40 to 50 percent of sex offenders that have engaged in sexual contact with children have equal or higher sexual arousal with adults. Let's remove the DSM-5 for a minute and focus on the definition that is generally agreed upon. Sexual feelings directed towards children. Your point on the DSM-5 was good until you cherry-picked the lexico definition instead of the more commonly used Merriam-Webster, which actually specifies prepubescent. You even read out this exact definition, even though you accused me of not reading. I'm sure these points would have hit a lot harder if they weren't overshadowed by how much of a fucking douchebag you are. Did you just memory hole how you accused a 15-year-old of being a pedophile and tried to run him off the internet? We just forgot that? Remember, you were being turned on by a literal child. If you legitimately feel this way, you need some help. Log off. You need to, like, leave online settings because you cannot have a public platform when you've admitted to this stuff. And this stuff is going to haunt you now, forever, online. Willie Mac even pointed out how you lied about apologizing for accusing him of suicide baiting because he didn't kill himself and instead doubled down that he suicide baited. You can't make this shit up. But at the end of the document, he said, I might just upload my next video and then fucking kill myself. Okay, well, he didn't. He wasn't. He, those weren't 
genuine, that wasn't a, a genuine thing. He tried to weaponize a suicide attempt to try and make us feel bad about him saying he was being attracted to a 12 year old. And then he said, oh, I apologize to Pi Man. And I thought, well, saying that you apologized isn't really a fair claim to make because most people are asking him to apologize for the suicide baiting thing. And he never apologized for most of the stuff. Moments after John's apology aired, Pi Man DM'd me. John said he stood by calling me a suicide baiter, saying it was just his opinion and I'm free to disagree. Twitter pedophiles have even coined a phrase for this, no map, which stands for non-offending minor attracted person. He would probably call these people pedophiles and you would be completely justified in doing so. No, now you're putting words in my mouth. Even in this definition you showed, it makes a distinction between pedophiles, hebophiles, and ephebophiles. I know that people joke if you point that out, but if you don't, there would be no difference between being attracted to an 8-year-old versus being attracted to a 16-year-old, which trivializes the label entirely. They don't call me Brodnicles. So no, I would much rather be technically accurate than throwing around pedo accusations like you. I heard a lot of people say this was one of your more solid points, but I disagree. This was fucking terrible. Interviewing Zero and Vanessa, recounting details about Zero's graphic suicide story. This entire section completely took me by surprise, and I can see it served no other purpose than to emotionally manipulate the audience to feel bad for Zero. I know this is hard for you, John, but just like how a 15-year-old not killing themselves isn't some kind of emotional ploy to make you feel bad, why the fuck would I say that it's a suicide note and then give you zero evidence to suggest that it was a suicide note? That's because Zero wholeheartedly intended for this to be his suicide note. I'm not Zero, so if you want to argue what it is after the fact, go ahead, I don't give a shit. But without Zero and Vanessa's first-hand accounts of that event, the only thing that would exist is my words. I think the framing of its only possible use being for emotional manipulation is funny because <laughs> it's almost like you've learned nothing about suicide. Technical's video does not include a reading of the messages or do Katie's story justice at all, highlighting only 10% of Katie's 1,300 word tweet longer, so 90% of the context is missing. If we assume that all of what Katie says is true, this is disgusting. Why? What? This video is an opinion piece, and even though he states that all the information is alleged and all parties are innocent until proven guilty, he sure as hell doesn't treat it that way. I mean, he basically implies that Zero is guilty in the first minute of the video. But what if the person he was defending was actually guilty? What the fuck happened to innocent until proven guilty? Where, where did that go? That went out the window real quick. Zero should not be allowed back in any online setting where he would have the ability to interact with minors on a daily basis. This is pretty standard in nearly every other profession that involves children. So tell me, John, which stance are you lying about to make it sound better for a YouTube video? Because in your video titled, Why Onision Will Never Go to Prison, you say that he most likely abuses his position of power to prey on younger girls. In fact, he is most likely a disgusting and repulsive human being who uses his position of power to prey upon younger girls that don't know any better. And then you also make a statement against him being deplatformed because there's been no conviction. He needs to be taken off of YouTube. He needs to be put in jail. And I said to her, N no, no, he shouldn't because he hasn't committed a crime or he hasn't been charged with a crime. Whenever you are charged with a crime, your channel gets terminated. Which you actually criticized me for bringing up in my video because I guess the tweets that I posted about the topic didn't have enough likes. The legal argument that no one with any notable platform has ever made, at least not to my knowledge. I can only assume this because the tweets he shows to transition into this section have no likes and three likes, respectively. I don't know why the fuck the amount of likes or who said it matters. You're fucking with me, right? Like, you're fucking with me? Unless I'm mistaken, I don't see anywhere where you state Onision shouldn't be allowed to upload content except for this comment on your most recent video where it says you campaign for his deplatforming due to rampant copyright abuse, but you don't even mention the grooming. Where's the one and done policy there, John? It doesn't mean that Zero should be allowed to post content for children again. I'm personally not comfortable with that at all. He uses his position of power to prey upon younger girls that don't know any better. He needs to be taken off of YouTube. And I said to her, Listen, bitch, if you can't show me where he violated TOS, then take your sorry ass to Discovery Plus. I don't think you accidentally have two different takes here. I think you're purposefully doing it to pretend like you have the moral high ground when we both know you're full of shit. I mean, if he broke TOS, I'm right behind you, buddy. I'm right there. I'm right there with you, Johnny boy. This, along with my next point, really highlights how obvious it was you were trying to paint everything in the worst light possible. 
Tech spends the next six minutes discussing Nairo. This section also serves another purpose. Because the Smash community welcomed Nairo back without much reservation, he implies that Zero should also return, because what he did was apparently not as bad. I gotta hand it to you, this is some pretty impressive tunnel visioning. To reach this conclusion, you've had to have missed everything I said about Nairo in relation to Zero. Even if you didn't see any tweets, this follow-up that clarifies it in the first 30 seconds. First off, just to clarify, when I say welcome back Zero, I mean welcome back to uploading content, not to Smash events. Despite me never making that argument, I think it's worth clearing up. Was out two weeks before you uploaded this video. So either your research is that fucking lazy, or you're actively lying for whatever reason. Not like anyone's surprised. <laughs> we got him guys! See look, I knew he was gonna bring up that I lied to Dream, how did I know? Wow, you guessed I'd bring up the single thing that stunted your entire channel and ruined your credibility. I didn't say this because we were cool and I was trying to support you because I already knew you were getting a lot of shit. Who the fuck lies that much about a little trolling? Like some mild trolling, like just the n-word. Whoever convinced you to make a video about a cover-up is a fucking legend. If Nairo isn't owned a platform because of the severity of the allegations against him, why should Zero be owned one? Sure, sexual contact with a minor is certainly worse than what Zero did, I'm not denying that. But they're both bad, right? Both of them should be shunned from the community. Let's stay consistent. One is an undeniable crime of sex acts with a minor that has unwavering support from the community, and the other can't even be prosecuted because the alleged conversations don't actually exist. While it's true that both are bad, the cases are wildly different. So expecting the exact same stance on two cases that range in severity is just intellectually dishonest. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you're telling me that Technicals at the age of 19 was the leader of a group chat where minors were sending nudes and lewd images of themselves and he did absolutely nothing to stop them? Wrong. Wrong on all accounts. It's interesting that the people that are so adamant about false allegations and knowing everything about it before pushing them is perfectly fine doing it to others whenever it fits their needs. You know that Twitter video you keep referencing where I said I owned all the group chats? I was in the group chat. I was in every group chat because I was the leader. Technically, I didn't even own the chat because after I looked back at the logs, I had been kicked multiple times, but that's irrelevant. That was made before minor sending nudes was even an accusation because the person who made the twit longer on my brother about how the art made him so uncomfortable was in that side chat talking about sex and sending images that neither me nor my brother was involved in. Any evidence that exists or that you can find would show that I neither condone nor contributed to any of the activity you're accusing me of. So unless you want to provide more than a paper-thin argument and a fucked timeline, I'd appreciate it if you actually researched before throwing accusations into your hit pieces. Because this is just sloppy. Your excuse is that no one had access to this information. This is just downright dishonest. These messages he's showing on screen were only made public by technicals after the release of my video. How could I talk about them or address address them in any way if no one had access to them. I'm sure you'd love to use Nicholas Diorio as an excuse for not doing your due diligence when that was related to him DM leaking during a Twitter argument, uh, which has nothing to do with you at all. Also, I have no fucking clue who Edgar's Degradations is, and I don't care. Me and you have worked together, we have a professionally established connection, and you know that you could have talked to me at any point, yet you decided not to. Forget the lying to all your friends, forget lying to Dream. I think this really speaks to your character more than anything. I know that I've worked with uh, Nicholas Diorio and John Swan in the past. That will not be happening in the future. Even when I was working with Diorio, I gave him the easiest part of the Sky House, which was only the finances, and he still managed to wait until the last week to even start working on it and gave me his piece at 7 a.m. I wasn't planning on working with him anyways. He's fucking lazy as shit, and I'm not a huge fan of his content either. I think it actually made my video worse. It's just the amount of obvious pseudo-intellectualism and moral grifting just to get ahead in the fucking fucking commentary game. Ah, oh, it's it's so cancer. I I fucking hate all of you. Oh, and one last thing, please, please, for the love of God, do not go on Twitter and harass Turkey Tom. He is not Zaptai. Don't even go and harass Zaptai, okay? I have no problem with him uploading content. If he wants to come back and make a redemption arc, he has to prove that to his audience. And if they decide to support him, they support him. If they don't, they don't. 
Same exact thing for Zero. The next video we're gonna do is gonna be a PO unboxing video, and then I already have a 100K special in the works. So I hope you guys enjoy that. This has been the commentary double standard. If you guys enjoyed, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. I'm the GOAT. I'm the GOAT. <laughs> huh, huh, huh. I'm the GOAT. I'm the GOAT. I'm the GOAT. Huh, huh, huh. I'm the, I'm the GOAT. Hey, once it come to that 60 minute shit, I'm the GOAT. I'm the GOAT. Y'all niggas acting like I ain't popping like a number two pencil. What? I'm the GOAT. I'm the GOAT. One minute, hell no. 60 minute, wake up back out, and I'm out, and I'm out. Mm. Nigga banging on the front door, you already know a zoo is gripping. So I grip to the back door with my finger on the trigger. Just in case. Can I get a water? You can have one for free because you're a boss, dude. Hell yeah. See, this is my channel right here. All right. Did you like it? Did you subscribe to oh, it or what? Yeah, yeah. You can go ahead and subscribe and uh, turn on all notifications. There you go. Hey right. man, you guys do your thing man. Thank you. <laughs> Subscribe to Technicals on YouTube. It don't matter how thick the booty is, how thick the pussy, you can have hair, it only take 13 years to get hair on the pussy. It's not ready, you gotta let it develop with the mind, man. That's all it is to it. Elvis, Elvis stop, Elvis.